Hi, I'm Tom Summers with the Diner Realty and thanks for tuning in. Today I want to talk about associations. Part of my role as a buyer's agent is to help my clients navigate through all of the paperwork and all of the different steps to purchasing a home. If you're considering buying a townhome or a condominium, by now I'm sure you've heard of an association fee. Most buyers understand that there's a monthly fee that's associated with the purchase of either one of these units or the ownership, but a lot of buyers don't really know much more than that basic fact. So I want to go through and give you some information so that when you're handed a huge pile of paperwork before you purchase this home, you're not overwhelmed or as overwhelmed as you probably will be. So let's start with the association itself. The association is put together to help you, the homeowner, work through different issues that you may have while you own the home. Not all of it is negative. They're also there to follow up with you, help you solve problems, give you information, and do different things to help you make it better for living in that community. The people that are on the association or the board of association is usually people who live in the community that have been voted into that position by other people who live in the community. Sometimes they'll have specific titles. One will be a president, the other one will be the treasurer, and, and so on. And sometimes it's just a group of people that all kind of share all the responsibility. Either way, at the end of the day, they're all there to help you. They're also there to help you before you purchase. So if you have questions, you can go to them and say, hey, you know, I'm thinking about moving in here, but I've got some questions I'd like for you to answer so that you are comfortable with the purchase. Now with this association, they also will hire a management company. This management company kind of oversees all the maintenance aspect of your townhome or condominium. They're the ones who will take care of removing snow and cutting the lawn, taking care of the common areas, building exterior and all of that. So when you make that monthly association payment, it's important to know what it is you're actually paying for and what money is going where. The most typical setup that I see in the state of Minnesota is with a monthly association fee, you're going to get professional management, you're going to get snow and lawn care, sewer and water, hazard insurance, building exterior, and general maintenance of the common grounds. The hazard insurance is probably one of the biggest, and it's really important that you know that this is included. Hazard insurance is no different than if you purchase a single family home and you buy a home insurance policy on that house. That's what the hazard insurance covers. So if the unit were to burn to the ground, you've got insurance that will pay for it to rebuild it. But there are some associations that are not handling the hazard insurance, so that would be an additional cost to you over and above whatever your monthly association fee is. Also inside that monthly association fee, some of that money goes to the professional management, some of it will go to the city for sewer and water. So you're really going to want to know, okay, what does this cover and how much is going where? And then in addition, some of that money will go into the association's bank account because they're saving up money for future issues in case you have to have uh, siding repaired or redone or new windows, new roof. They want to have enough money saved up in the future that they're able to pay for all of those items without asking for the residents for additional money to cover it. Some of the other things that you want to know is does the association allow rentals? If so, how many? Everyone can rent or do they cap it at a certain percent, like no more than 20 percent of the homes can be rented? You also want to ask questions like how many foreclosures are there or how many vacant homes are there currently in the development. This is really important because obviously the more homes that are vacant, the better chance of that association fee going up on a monthly basis because the people who are actually living there are now covering for all the people that have left. Thirdly, if you're, an FA, if you're looking into FHA financing, there's a requirement with FHA that a certain number or a certain percentage of the units um, don't have vacancies or foreclosures and some of them are even concerned about the number of rentals. So when you write a purchase agreement, one of the things that you're going to sign is a piece of paper that gives you a 10-day right of rescission to review all of the condominium townhome rules and regulations.
So the listing agent is responsible for delivering to your buyer's agent and you the following items. There's a resale disclosure certificate and that essentially is a piece of paper that says you are buying this house, you have read through all of the rules and the documents and you know that the fee is X number of dollars per month and you are agreeing to pay that fee. They're also going to give you any and all declarations of the associations, any and all of the amendments the supplements, any updates, changes since the townhomes or the condominiums were built. They're going to give you all the bylaws, the articles of incorporation, the rules and regulations, and then the projected annual budget. So you'll be able to look at the financials and determine whether um, they look like they are financially healthy enough that you can move in there without having a concern. Two of the biggest issues I think that most of the buyers that I work with want to know is they want to know are rentals allowed because there's some people who you know are purchasing a townhome or a condo and thinking okay maybe in the future we may want to move somewhere else or to a single family home and keep this as a rental and then the other piece that they're looking to know more often than not is, is are pets allowed because there's so many people who have a family pet they want to know is there you know are cats and dogs allowed are there breed restrictions? Is there a height and weight restriction? So you want to make sure you know all that up front so that you're not surprised on the day of closing after you've signed off on everything. So during that 10-day um, rescission period, I always recommend to my buyers, call the management company and ask specific questions and also call the association. I want you to hear it directly from them rather than going on hearsay or what someone else provides you that's not specifically working in one of those situations. Just knowing that much and covering some of the basics will really help you. Um, you also, the one the other thing you want to know is, is what's covered with that association because many of the homeowners associations will cover with the hazard insurance the building exterior, uh, you know, roof and siding, foundation, all of that, but they do not cover windows or doors. So if a kid throws a baseball through your window, you're more than likely, as the homeowner, going to be responsible for repairing that window, just like a sliding glass door. So you want to know as much as you can up front to help you make a better decision as to whether this is going to be the right fit for you. I hope this has helped. If you have any questions and you live in the Minneapolis and St. Paul area and you're looking for a real estate agent that will help represent you and your interests, please give me a call. I appreciate you taking a couple of minutes to watch this video and feel free to browse my YouTube channel and look for other helpful videos. Thanks. Until next time, have a great day.